our primary audience is probably people who are using Teams. Yep. We use Slack a lot, but we use Teams a lot too. What are the things that people usually see something like Teams and say, okay, this is the next way to communicate, but they kind of fall into the person-based approach still. And we'll talk about kind of why that's that's a problem, but let's relate it to the people of how might they be using the tool today um, that is, quote unquote, not the best. Yeah, so almost every tool that can support topic-based communication can also support person-based communication. And that applies to email, it applies to Teams, it applies to Slack. And uh, in the world of email, um, it's the default. Like you get a two in the front and you say, this is what it is. And then you do the CC and then you do a subject, mm -hmm. right? You don't do the subject first because it doesn't help in regards to where it's going. Um, these tools like Teams, for example, and Slack, it still supports direct messaging. Mm -hmm. right and direct messaging and files and calendar these things are highly promoted within the package right when you open the if you're a brand new tenant don't have anything you open it up you click on the top things you see are like chat you know activities and stuff but then chat is really high, high on the list channels or a, a calendar is really high on the list and files is really high on the list or, or OneDrive those are all personal individual things. Mm -hmm. If I use chats, it's no better than me sending an email to someone directly, right? If I put something in my OneDrive, it's no different than putting something on my local fo local file system on my computer, right? And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck, where they say, why is this tool so much better? I'm using chats, the direct messages, I'm, I'm using the files, but I'm not feeling this like, warm, fuzzy, like this mm -hmm. is changing the way that we're communicating. <clears throat> and so I feel like Teams probably gets a bit of a bad rap because people don't make that shift towards yeah. the next level. I think Matt's hitting on it really well when he talks about a chat is really no better than an email because that kind of brings us to the, the first problem I would call out is all of it's owned by the individual. The individual is responsible for all that information, whether it's in a chat or whether it's in an email. Mm -hmm. So it's on that individual person to make sure, are they the only one that needs to know? Did other people need to know? Um, they're responsible for either looking at it, sorting it, putting it in the right spot, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of leads to just a whole nother issue. If you have a lot of these conversations going on, so a lot of emails or a lot of chats, why do we create, you know, email folders? Because we're trying to sort things right. by where these go, whether it's projects, whether it's yeah, you different have a whole topics, video right? About how to organize your inbox, inbox, right? And we all do it, right? Yeah. It's natural because you're trying to bring some type of organization or structure to complete chaos. So I would say those are two big problems I would bring up of it's all owned and responsible for by the individual. And number two, you have to do the work to organize it after you've received it, yeah, which is so just extra work. A lot of the same symptoms are mirrored on Teams yes. or email. If you're, you're using direct chats. Right. Yeah, you're still going to have group chats. Yeah. Yeah. You're still going to need to, like I think about BCCing a boss so that someone can be in the loop when there's conflict or something where, in an email, it's just direct between those people, and then you want mm -hmm. to loop more people in. It creates this constant game of who needs to pay attention to what, and yes. everyone needs to filter through that in their inbox in one feed. And it's yeah. not great. And it's up to every individual to do it. Yep. So now, rather than having, this is how we manage our stuff for this project or for this topic, you have... Emma has her way and I have my way and mm -hmm. you have your way and somebody else has their way and we just hired somebody new, they get to figure out their own way, right? Um, and then the last thing I'll say, the last problem that I would highlight is um, there's no way to opt into these things, right? So, so many times, you know, in, in email and in chat messages, people get overwhelmed uh, by, people are either overwhelmed or they're not informed, one or the other, right? You either have a situation where someone includes everyone on every chat because they want them to see it, but in the chat message, every chat message, Teams expects you and, and Slack and all of these tools expects you to want to read every message. Well, they're really only doing it so that I can keep updated so we have our next meeting. 
if they wanted to review it ahead of time, they could review it. I don't need a response right then. They don't need to respond to it immediately. But there is no other tool. There's no other way. Mm -hmm. When you BCC or CC someone, it's going to go in their mailbox. And if they don't have it, you know, categorized and automatically going into a folder, it's going to be there with a bunch of other messages, right? The other end of it is somebody never includes anybody. Everything's, you know, I talk to this person and then I talk to that person and then I talk to this person. And then, you know, you're hearing five different versions of the message. There's no way for the person who is maybe interested in that topic but doesn't want to like get all of that flood of information to go on a, you know, Friday afternoon or a, a Monday morning, say, I'm going to catch up on these things mm -hmm. and kind of catch up on something that they're only, you know, interested in a little bit, not something that they need every day, right? There's just mm -hmm. no option for that in email and in direct message and, and like all of that stuff. There's just not a way to do that. And we're hitting on a lot of human behavior aspects with in this conversation of each of us has our own way of working. So each of us wants to organize things in our own way or have an understanding of what we want to listen to or what we don't, what we need to look at, what we feel we don't need to be involved in. So what we're talking about with topic-based communication, and I think we'll get, get there, is allowing people to make that decision autonomously, but having the option to opt in or opt out of things, which is kind of what you want to be able to do with email, but you, you can't. can't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, let's go there. Let's talk about topic-based communication to the rescue. Woo! What, yeah, what <laughs> all is this? <clears throat> why is this such a game changer? Like, not just from a technology perspective, but like from an experience perspective for someone Let's, yep. let's kind of like recap what the chat channels means and yeah. maybe what it means in Microsoft Teams and let, let's go there for a minute. Well, let's, uh, let's start with a really quick example. So I'm going to steal this from one of Matt Dressel's blogs because I think it was a good example. So let's say I'm working on a project and I need to tell some of the folks I'm working with that I've updated all of the side deck that we're going to present and I need the, them to review. I really just need Sally and Dave to review. So in person base, mm -hmm. I would just have emailed Sally and Dave and say, can you review this slide deck and get me back your response. In topic based, I would put that in a channel that is labeled project, you know, blue sky. Yep. And I would say, tag Sally and Dave and say, hey, can you review these slides? Now let's say Sally's out on vacation and Morgan is stepping up in her place and she's going to review the slides. I didn't know Sally was out. Well, Morgan's in that channel. She's already aware of that project. So now she sees the slide. She's able to respond. The information is in the channel. We're good. The people who need to know about it. Exactly. Knew no. about it. Whereas in the first example, in the first part of that example, I would have gotten an out of office message. Maybe Sally forgot to put her out of office message on and mm -hmm. it just sits for two weeks. There's so many pitfalls of obviously person-based and email. We've all been there. Um, but having a channel for that specific project, for that specific topic and posting there actually takes care of a lot of those issues. So there's an example to kind of think through. Um, but Matt, why don't you talk more about just the structure of yeah, channels? I mean, the the concept of um, of topics within teams in particular is very robust. So you have it at multiple layers. You have the at the top layer, it's a team. So um, you can have multiple teams and each team in itself by its very nature is a topic, right? Um, you know, a lot, some organizations will have an uh, all company team, right? Well, the topic there is stuff that you'd want everybody in the company to be able to see. Um, they might have another project that is maybe a team focused that might be you know, the marketing team. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's a topic. It's topics related to the people within the marketing team, right? Um, and then you might have teams that are project focused. That would be topics related to a particular project that some that a smaller group of people are working on. Um, within that, you have channels. And a channel is also a subtopic, if you will, right? So in the marketing uh, team, you might have a channel for general, which might be just general conversations, but you also might have one that's on a specific topic or activity that's going on. We're doing a campaign. Yeah, yeah on a yeah. campaign that marketing is going through, right? Um, or we're or, building a video course about... <laughs> yeah. Right. Or <clears throat> maybe your, your social media is separated yeah. out there, your Instagram, your yep. Facebook. Yeah. Um, and so th it really, there is a lot of robust functionality around topics within the Teams application. Um, and it really... 
um, as you were saying, it provides a lot of uh, benefit to be able to go into a channel that is on you know a particular project and be able to have that discussion there and not be afraid that someone might not be informed or right. that when next week when you know maybe you're you're jumping off the project this week and you're you're putting your final notes together being afraid that next week it'll get lost and somebody you're just going to get asked for it again no it's it's right there it's in the team somebody has access to it they'll be able to figure that out and there's that history aspect um which yeah, yeah is exactly what you're hitting on a history that's topic specific, right? not just the history of emails that I happen to have gotten on a particular topic, but a topic, a comprehensive topics history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, talk about context, especially if you're onboarding someone or someone's newer to a project or, you know, you're trying to be agile and have people jump around from thing to thing. It really helps with that type of movement within a company because if someone's added to a team and you can scroll back up and kind of see what's happened recently it it really gives you context and you feel like you can hit the ground running versus hey can you forward me every email that you've received and i mean who wants to do that no one right